These are basically students that go to McGill and uh, in uh, law faculty, faculty of law en droit. The subject they've chosen to discuss and to interact with us is on the Code Criminel, the uh, Penal Code. So, Bonjour, Jemma. my name is Gemma. I am a second year law student at McGill. So, my name is Julie. I'm Sue Jin. I'm Jess. There's something very important happening today, and I'm asking the youth. Any one of you, you should just come. Yes, what's happening today? Election in the USA. Thank you. So it's very <coughs> symbolic, even that you're here today, and I hope we we uh, we might not know everything about the United States the way they'll be tomorrow, even in terms of criminal uh, law and codes and everything. But uh, there will be an impact by the election that, 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 that we're living, uh, that we're seeing in the States. I was born in Montreal, but I'm actually an American citizen. Okay. So on behalf of my half people, yeah. <laughs> if we are foolish enough to vote for certain people, but I won't say who because we're recording this, uh, I apologize to all Canadians everywhere. <laughs> Alors, première chose is stealing. Body kick shows. Is stealing like a thing that is like usually an okay thing to do? No. Well, there's people who say no, okay. Um, why not? Y a-t-il des moments, y a-t-il des raisons où peut-être c'est pas la pire chose à faire? Are there situations where stealing is maybe not the end of the world? And as far as. Ivan. Stealing is the end of but that's a percept. Okay, keep that one because that is a perception even my own daughter also has that because you're stealing in a dollar store and the things are of less value, why do you say it's not the same? Because if you steal the same thing, you steal the same thing. 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 You steal the Si tu voles dans moi, ça va pas être la même chose si tu voles tes premiers mille dollars comme ça. Si tu voles, si tu voles de plus cher, ça va être plus euh, comme coûter. comme ça plus de coûter. Tu vas pas aller en cours parce que t'as volé pour 5 dollars de bonbons. Pas ouais, la première fois, tu as un avertissement, <coughs> mais si la deuxième fois, tu risques d'y aller, je crois. Oh, I have, a, I have a different question. Um, what if there was something that you like a pen or something that's a very small value, oh, very awesome. cheap item that belonged to somebody else? Would it be okay, or how do you feel about if that was stolen from someone else? Even though it's something of very small value, a dollar maybe. Yeah. Does that make a difference? You still steal it. It's not grave, huh? It's not grave. It's not grave. It's not grave. It's not grave. Everybody has his own things. It's like if, for example, you've lost something, you've lost another one. Mais ça dépend aussi, c'est que si même euh, si même c'est une, une crayon, c'est que quelqu'un t'a offert et que tu veux le garder comme pour toi, comme quelque chose de précieux pour toi que tu t'es fait voler, mais c'est pas la même chose que tu peux racheter, racheter, racheter une autre crayon. Hmm? Mais ça, la personne qui vole, elle sait pas si toi ça a une valeur sentimentale. C'est même ça vaut rien. C'est ça que vous parlez là. If I took someone else's headphones, like that's replaceable, so I don't see like it's not a, it's a bit it's a deal obviously, but it's not a big deal, you know. It's not like, like let's keep on bullying them. Eh? <laughs> 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 they could replace it, you know. I have a question. Like, does it matter why you're stealing something? Do you guys think? Because well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if if I needed headphones, then. I wouldn't. But if I didn't, if I had a pair of headphones, I wouldn't take someone else's. But if I didn't, I would. What if it's like, like I don't know, like a sandwich? At a grocery yeah, if I'm store. hungry, yeah, yeah. If I'm hungry, yeah. Does it matter if it's something that is really cheap, but it's something that is really valuable to you? It belongs to you. And if someone took it, does that, does that make a difference? The fact that it belongs to someone, it's someone else's. Mais ça dépend si ça vous tire ou pas. Si okay, exemple, si c'est un crayon à, à 30 sous, c'est mm -hmm. le crayon de mon grand-père. Puis là, ça fait 10 ans qu'il est décédé, mais mm -hmm. je l'utilise quand même. Puis tu le prends. Voilà. Mais pour moi, ça a une valeur sentimentale parce que c'était le crayon de mon grand-père. Ouais. Mais c'est 30 sous. La valeur, la valeur monétaire, c'est différent de la valeur sentimentale. 
Ça a vraiment changé que si tu voulais un simple pen. Ouais. Coming out of the discussion so far, is that il y a deux côtés de, de cette question. And a lot of you picked on one of the sides, which is um, kind of like the practical side is like how valuable is the thing that's being taken and that something that has lower value is like less of a big deal or less of a deal than something that's really expensive or like something that um, has a high sentimental value. Donc, si je me permets, euh, si je comprends bien, tu veux dire comme le besoin tel qu'un médicament qu'on ne peut pas payer versus comme un, juste un désir. Ah, oh, j'aimerais avoir ce médicament parce que c'est un médicament qui est le fun, disons. Euh, mais c'est vraiment, il y a un besoin. Ta mère est malade, elle en a besoin. Si elle ne prend pas ce médicament-là, elle va s'empirer. Et vraiment, c'est le besoin versus juste un désir d'avoir quelque chose. So, like, the need versus just a want. Mm -hmm. Alors, on va faire un autre exemple. Le torturer. So, torture. Okay. Torture. Torturer, torturer quelqu'un. Est-ce qu'on a jamais entendu les raisons pour lesquelles la torture ou torturer n'est pas si pire? Entre euh, moi, ben, j'ai déjà attendu parce que, comme si on il y a quelqu'un qui l'a déjà torturé, qui y a quelqu'un qui l'a dit, c'est pas aussi pire parce que il y a quelqu'un comme, je sais pas, comme il a tué ta mère ou je sais pas quoi, il, le gars le torture comme pour, pour prendre sa revanche. Il y en a qui l'ont dit, c'était pas aussi pire que faire pour le fun. J'ai parfois dans des séries télévisées, genre comme sur Netflix, et la police utilise la torture pour faire passer, pour euh, chercher comme où sont ils sont cachés, comme sur Narcos aussi, que c'est euh, sur Pablo Escobar. Mm. Mais, ils, mais les, dans les deux camps, ils utilisent la police pour savoir où ils étaient, et euh, comme Pablo Escobar, ils, ils utilisent ça pour savoir qu'est-ce que la police allait faire. Il y a deux exemples qui ressortent déjà. There's the example that like we often see, which is the police officers or law enforcement or national security types who will say that torture or enhanced interrogation techniques are used to get information out of people that they need for these other situations that are considered more important to them. There's also the example of their sort of revenge idea where you kill a member of my family and the torture happens as a response to that. And it might be interesting, do you think maybe 10 years ago and today, what people think about torture and if it's okay or not, has that changed? What do you think? Is it worse or is it better? Well, no, it's better. And which where, which country are you talking about? Haiti? How about Guantanamo Bay? That's what my... And they still do up till this day. But yeah. Guantanamo Bay closed. No, no, it's not closed. That's one of the things Obama never did. He never closed it. Actually, very interestingly, yeah. does anybody has anybody heard of John Oliver, the comedian? He's British, mm -hmm. um, oh, but he yeah, works yeah, in the yeah, U.S. The guy with the glasses. The guy with the, the, guy glasses. With the glasses <laughs> who looks like an older version of Harry Potter is yeah. how he's described himself. Uh, he actually did something on Guantanamo Bay and how President Obama has tried to close it um, and that there are a lot of factors right now that are preventing it. Obviously, the, 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 the bureau is going to just... Uh, when they used to kill... Uh, you know, uh, Marie Antoinette and all, you know, the, the 1789 uh, re French Revolution. I'm just taking that as yeah. an example. Uh, you could have, uh, you know, Jeanne d'Arc, Dac or so she got tortured. I mean, uh, the one that perpetrates it always going to validate and try to justify it. Yeah. So in any case, whether he's doing good or bad, whatever information or whatever correction he's trying to do. Uh, mm -hmm. We have Marie-Joseph Angélique that is uh, a black slave that was burned to the ground, um, uh, you know, dragged and burned and tortured. Uh, just as an example also, because she had burnt old Montreal at the time in 1733, per se. I mean, I'm sure the, the CIA and the FBI use it. L'idée qu'on a toujours, il y a toujours le, le perspective de 
c'est comme ça, puis c'est toujours comme ça, puis c'est ce que le, la loi dit, puis ça, c'est la réponse à la question. So there's always this perspective of like, the law says this, and that's the end of it, that's the end of the discussion. Mais en réalité, il y a toujours les exceptions qu'on le croit, les croit bonnes ou mauvaises, because whether in law there's always some type of exception that exists, whether we think it's a good or a bad one. So there's, in a situation, par exemple, qu'on a, on a discuté où peut-être la mère est malade, puis on va les médicaments, puis si jamais quelqu'un s'était attrapé ou euh, arrêté pour quelque chose comme ça, si ça, ça vient en cours où on dit, ben, voici, voilà la situation, c'est pas comme le juge ou n'importe qui vont ignorer ça complètement. It's not that the judge would, if something like the stealing medications for your mother that you can't afford, if someone was ever arrested for that, th and that situation comes out in court, that does change. The judge isn't blind to those situations. On that note, we were yeah. wondering if you had any ideas about anything, any rules, it could be rules, it could be laws, that are happening here in Youth in Motion, or anywhere else kind of that, uh, that you're you're in, yeah. where the rules might can have exceptions sometimes. Sometimes it might be okay to break the rules. Yeah. Do you have any ex examples of those things? For boys in the house, it's not a written rule, and it depends who will enforce it. Like I will try. Bring up your pets. Exactly. That's what's me. Me. That's gonna be me. Maybe exactly. another animator is gonna be more lenient. Mm -hmm. exactly. Maybe, you know, and such and such. Yeah. So, but that's not a written, it's not because yeah, yeah, yeah. we we never thought 10 years ago that the fashion would be like that, so we didn't yeah, write yeah. it. But I mean, so there might be, like I just said, there might be a principal in your school, Yeah. he might be hard on something, the next principal come in, and him is a different thing he's looking at totally. Yeah. So. Another another rule, are you allowed to scream in youth emotion? Are you allowed to Shit, huh? Is that a rule? Are you allowed to scream? We're, we're not supposed to. <laughs> not supposed right? to. Right, yeah. we s or not, We're allowed to scream? No. Okay. When would be, is there like a situation where you might be like we're screaming like... Motion? No, no, never, right? Eh? No. Michael never screams. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but is, is there a situation where maybe even midnight could not fault you for screaming? Midnight? You have <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We're getting real here. Hi. Ask it, it's just you. Know, you know, when you right? see a youth in motion, Mais Monsieur Minuit, vraiment vous chienne, si vous priez. On essaie de vous aider, là, ok? <rire> ben, si tu t'es fait mal, t'es tombé des, 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 des marches, là. Okay. C'est sûr que je serais bien mal placé pour. Euh, ok. Ça. okay. Parfait. Entre autres, mais je dis, pas avoir. Si c'est une emergency. Si c'est une emergency. Oui, si il y a une exactly. situation d'urgence. D'urgence. Perfect. So like, we can see that there are like even to the rules here there are like situations where like bending the rules is like pas la fin du monde nécessairement. Rules are meant to be broken. Ah, <laughs> spoken like a true future lawyer. <laughs> see, one thing that I love about law is that you can use it to argue yourself into or out of almost any situation. Wow. It's an art. It an is art. an art. And so on our exams, for instance, the professor might ask a question, do you agree with this? And you can say, yes, I do agree. No, I don't agree. Or I refuse to answer this question because it is wrong for the following reasons. <laughs> so now we're gonna move a little bit more into the criminal side of criminal law. So I have some questions for you guys. Do you think that harsh punishments deter people from crime. So, if you'll recall, um, the previous government, federal government, had a very uh, harsh uh, on crime stance, mm -hmm. um, and it was rather contentious, like it went through the court system, people were saying that it was not right, other people were saying it was right. What do you guys think? Pensez-vous que 
Quand les punitions sont très sévères, pensez-vous que ça fait penser au monde, oh oh, avant de commettre comme un crime, je vais y penser et non finalement parce que euh, la punition va être trop sévère, finalement je vais pas le faire. Pensez-vous que ça fonctionne? Ça dépend de la personne. Ça dépend ça de la personne, de ok. Ouais. Ça dépend de la situation. C'est là, de parfait. Est-ce que vous avez des exemples de personnes ou d'actes? On va dire que ce garçon, il voulait manger des, des bains. Alors, il en vole. Mais il n'avait pas d'argent avec lui. Et là, il s'est fait voir, comme on l'a vu. Il s'est fait prendre. Oui, ouais, il s'est fait prendre. Et là, il, comme, il s'est arrêté parce qu'il n'a pas de Mais comme ça dépend parce que tes parents, des fois, ils peuvent te prendre des affaires, genre comme ton téléphone ou quelque chose. Donc, des fois, ils vont aimer ça, puis des fois, non. Ok, mais mettons que tu fais quelque chose euh, à la maison, mettons c'est pas un crime, mais si tu fais quelque chose à la maison euh, et puis tes parents ont une, pu une punition très sévère, comme prendre ton téléphone pendant, mettons, un mois, mm -hmm. ok? Est-ce que la prochaine fois tu vas y penser deux fois? Ben moi oui, mais je sais pas. C'est que toi tu es d'accord avec Ivan, ça dépend de la personne, hein? The thing is, if you're about to stop someone because you're in rage and everything, and you know, you prob well, if you're saying you'll know the consequences, will it stop you in this moment of chances are, because look, you've you're lost, thinking, you're not yeah. always thinking. Okay. So that's the thing. It reminds me that sometimes when um, you're being defended by a lawyer and you are going to court with another, the other side, and you kind of fight it out but then sometimes you settle things on negotiation mm -hmm. so the two sides talk to each other and they say you know what let's have this as a sentence let's agree to disagree the fun thing about the fun and also it's the challenging thing with criminal law and the way that the lawyers act in criminal law compared to in civil cases where you're suing in a civil case they're both representing different people's interests so well, they we're talking about criminal law, civil yes, but I mean, criminal. Criminal. But, but like, they think money, but money like, make, like mean something in, in any case. Money, money is going to mean something in if every case. Let's say I ways. kill somebody, right, and he kills somebody. Yeah. Okay. He have a million, half ten thousand dollars, right? He's paying his lawyer the million, and I'm paying my lawyer ten thousand dollars. Who have more chance to be the case or get less time, me or him? It's and we did the same crime. Si on voit que deux personnes qui vont faire le même crime, mais parce que, mettons, un a un milliard de dollars et l'autre a seulement 10 000, ils ne peuvent, euh, peuvent pas comme s'acheter le meilleur avocat qui, qui existe. Exactement. Et donc... Ben, un peut, puis l'autre peut pas. C'est ça. Et donc, par conséquent, il y a une personne qui peut avoir, mettons... Euh, comme service communautaire, disons, et l'autre personne va être en prison. Okay. Donc, est-ce que vous pensez qu'on devrait avoir des punitions standardisées, standardisées pour tout le monde? Donc, peu importe la personne soit riche ou non, peu importe si on a volé le médicament parce qu'on en a besoin ou juste parce qu'on veut aller le vendre ou juste parce que c'est le fun. Moi, j'allais dire qu'on a presque ça parce qu'il y, y a des gens qui sont millionnaires. Mm -hmm. Comme le monsieur that he just, I think, they reopened his case in Nova Scotia. He killed his father there. The yes. rich, this rich, rich guy. Mm -hmm. And they put him in jail and I think <coughs> now he's back out on bail. Um, so it does happen where cases where rich, rich people get sentenced to the for first degree murder. It does happen. Mm -hmm. So is it standardized? No. Should we have it? I don't know. Well, the federal government had um, created a minimum sentence for drug trafficking for marijuana. Yeah. Okay. So should we, on one hand, we've been arguing we should take into account the circumstances, right? Maybe somebody needs that money to feed their family. Mm -hmm. Or should everybody have the same sentence regardless of circumstances? That way somebody who can afford a really good lawyer, somebody who can't, hey. So they all get treated the same. Problem. Then we're not standardized okay. because they'll even sometimes look at how your upbringing was. Médical, ça va être différent que si tu prends pour tes propres besoins. Ouais, Genre, si, si, exemple, tu prends de la marijuana juste pour get high et tout, comme mm -hmm. ça, ça dépend, si tu, ça dépend si tu apprends pour médecine aussi. C'est parce que la marijuana, ça a aussi un usage médicinal. Alors, c'est pour mm -hmm. ça que ça. Pense, maman, pense, 
Ouais, c'est pas encore légalisé. Ouais. Puis aussi, pour acheter la marijuana médicale, il faut avoir une prescription d'un médecin. Je ne pense pas que ça devrait être standardisé parce que certains gens se sentent comme ils n'ont pas de contrôle sur ce qu'ils peuvent faire. Donc, je pense que ces gens. Yeah, but get your cut, man. Get your cut. That's see the guy. I mean, he killed his two kids. It's pretty clear to me that it's the revenge against and a lot of people do no, that. No, not eh? just like rage, like maybe and somebody, you, you think, like you sincerely think somebody's telling you to go kill that person. Like, how yeah, much yeah, yeah. will does that person else. have, how much control? Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I, all I know is a lot of people are using those right now. Issues. Yeah. That they're crazy so, and all of that. Yeah, there was a good there's point. And it works. Right? Yeah, there's a really good point that one of the kids made. Uh, mm. Can you repeat it again? That's mental issues. <laughs> yes. What? Okay. What does the law, what might the law say about mental health, mental issues, things like that? Let's look just at people who really do have a problem with mental health. Okay, forget forget about people who are falsely claiming that. I'm talking about people who really are sick. sick. Do you guys think that somebody who has a mental illness can just say, I'm gonna get over it? No. No? No. no. We agree, we agree, no. Okay, it's perfect, awesome. yeah. great. So you guys are right. Mental illness is the same thing as any other illness. It's the same thing as diabetes. It's the same thing as cancer. Okay, so like with diabetes, right, your blood sugar goes high, it goes low, your body can't control it. It's the same thing with mental health. So instead of it being the pancreas for diabetes, it's the brain. And so your brain works with little chemicals that communicate from one end of your brain to the other. Mm -hmm. And when people are really mentally ill, there's a problem because the chemicals are not in the right proportions. They're not balanced properly. So things happen. You might hear voices. You might see people that aren't really there. You might think that people are always out to get you. You might be convinced that every single person you cross on the street is trying to kill you. Okay? So that's not something that you can control any more than you can say, oh, right now, I've decided that my blood sugar is going to be right that perfectly. So, like diabetes, you need to take medication. You can take insulin, you can take metformin, you take a whole bunch of things. Medication it kills you. Yeah. It kills but you. What's the funny thing? The medication can actually make you <laughs> a lot better. It can regulate. It can regulate. Yeah. It's so crazy you need to be isolated. <laughs> if you're not, you're like, Oh, nah, but there's some but crazy people that need to be isolated. Yeah. If you have a mental nah, issue, but there's some that they like can take a pill and they're blessed. You're, you're probably right. Yeah, For yeah. sure, you need to be isolated. Yeah, that pill's not gonna last. No. Or have to put in a special I place. Know, like, do you yeah, think? Bro. Do you think there are different types of mental illnesses? So maybe some yeah, people, is. where it's really, really serious, they might need to be isolated. Whereas some other people, they can actually engage. With yeah, because some, some just take pills and they just like and they're blessed, you know. But yeah. some of them they they take the pills, but they still can't pro like you know they're crazy. Yeah, like, they're real crazy. And so, like with diabetes, for instance, for anybody who knows about diabetes, often um, you'll start with pills if it's a type if you're a type two diabetic. But the pills don't work for everybody. So sometimes, even when you take your pills exactly as your doctor told you, your blood sugars still go high. They might go low. It's the same thing with mental illness. So even if they say, okay, we figured out what you have, here, take this medication. Not every medication works for every person every time. So even they might be taking their medication, but they might still be sick. So for instance, in the case of depression, we know that um, often people will have to try three or four different medications before they find one that really works for them. Or a cocktail. Or multiple, yeah. yes, exactly. So the question is, for people with mental illness, do you think throwing them in jail, like let's say they commit a crime, right? So let's use the example of somebody maybe who thinks that everybody's out to get them. They really think that every single person that they see on the street is trying to harm them. And let's say at one point, um, you know, so they're walking by, somebody takes something out of their pocket, they take out their phone, and this person thinks, oh my goodness, they have a knife. They're gonna get me. And so they attack. In their mind, they're defending themselves. But when they get to court, right, this person was just taking out their phone, they had no knife, they didn't, you know, 
What do you think then? Do the you person think that attacked? Yeah. yeah. So the person who, who has a mental illness, who has attacked, but who didn't understand yeah. like the real situation, what was really happening. Keep that, that happens yeah. for black people too. White people get afraid and then over exaggeration. <laughs> over exaggeration. <laughs> Nah. But I mean, like, if you're crazy enough to, like, 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 it's difference between, like, defending yourself and, like, killing someone, you know? Like, if you're crazy enough to just kill someone, you know, like, I, I think, yeah, you should go to jail. You don't always plan to kill somebody. It just happens. Nah, no, I know what you mean, but I mean, like, if someone takes out a phone and I think it's a knife, like, I would push him away. I don't know. You push him in front of a car. You push him in front of a car and he dies. Okay, that's accidental. Okay, but that's accidental death, like, you know, like, I don't know, yo, you guys just made it complicated, yo. <laughs> but that's well, the thing, that we're trying to show that, like, that's law just... is complicated. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not black, white, right, wrong, it's everything is really gray. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, let's say, so using your example, you know, you push somebody, and with Gemma's conclusion, <laughs> you, you push them because you want to defend them, whoops, because you want to defend yourself, yeah. and accidentally, there's a car that comes by, they get hit. Maybe they don't die, but maybe, maybe they, they just, just crack get their skull on the sidewalk, or on the, okay, on the street, okay? Yeah. But let's say that the reason why you pushed that person mm -hmm. had to do with your mental illness, because you really thought they were a government spy, so that they could like hear your thoughts, and that they mm. were going to get, no, but... Okay, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Do you think that by putting you in jail, that yeah, that's you? different. I mean, like, like I mean, sick, sick people that like actually walk around killing people. Like, like I mean, people that walk around with hammers hitting people in the head. You know, like that's crazy. Like clowns. Uh, yeah, 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 them yeah, they should yeah, go to jail. Yeah. That's jail. You know, yeah. but I mean, like if you're if you're a little bit crazy, you know, you push someone to defend yourself and get like person dies, but that's that's an accident, you know. But I'm I'm sure the judge is gonna like realize that the person's sick, you know. And if he got hit by a car, he would assume that, you know, the push, you know, like, it's not really the person committing, like, killing him. Yeah, it's an like accident, this, you know? like, what you're saying is, like, there's a difference between when you're, like, you actually think that there's a, that you're in danger and you're protecting yourself yeah. versus maybe you, like, push the person on purpose because you didn't like them yeah. or because you're just like, I want to see what happens if I push a person in front of a car. There's yeah, a difference. Exactly. So, I'm going to ask the question. Et t'es pas obligé de répondre, mais pourquoi tu penses qu'on envoie des personnes en prison? C'est quoi le but, l'objectif? To be honest, pour, pour moi, c'est une question, c'est pas, c'est pas, parce que moi, dans ma tête, je sais que les prisons, c'est un business. More people get there, more money there's in the pocket. Mm -hmm. So, pour moi, c'est une question, je sais pas. Et ça, c'est, ça, c'est surtout à propos aux États-Unis, mais au Canada, c'est un système plutôt public. Donc, en effet, ça coûte de l'argent pour avoir les personnes en prison. So, est-ce qu'il y a d'autres raisons? Um, like, what do you think the politicians would say as to why they have prisons? Like, they can't protect, obviously protect, say... I, mean, I guess to protect people from, from people who are less okay. dangerous to society or mm -hmm. menace to society or... En fait, au Québec, Euh, pour euh, devenir un, un avocat, il faut étudier en droit dans une des universités qui offre le programme de droit. Puis pour entrer en droit, il faut faire un cégep avant. Ah, deux ans. Donc, deux ans de cégep. La plupart des programmes de droit sont trois ans. Le nôtre est un peu plus long. Parle-nous du barreau un peu. On est juste en train de barreau. C'est cool. Mais le barreau, c'est après l'école de droit. Okay. Donc, déjà, on a le cégep, ensuite, on a le Je vais l'expliquer comme. Maybe say it in English. Ok, so more. in English. So, let's, you're studying for your driver's exam, and you study for a year with the written exam. So, then you write your written exam. And then you have to practice for another year, whatever it is now, I don't know. And then you have to do your other, then you have to do your practice exam. It's the same type of thing. So, you have to do your three years of your university degree, but that's not good enough. You have to do another four or eight months of École du Barreau, so bar school, and then pass another exam, another set of exams. And then, and then there's the, the dash. And then yeah. there's the practice and stuff. And then yeah. every year or so, you have to go to conferences just to refresh your memory on new so development. It's five years? It's, yeah, more or less. The stage is what, six months? Six months. And, and even if you want to do criminal law, you can specialize further and do youth criminal law. Because that's totally different yeah. from adult criminal law. So I know a lot of lawyers uh, who do criminal defense, 
but for adults. And when I've asked them to take a case for a youth, they were like, oh no, I don't understand yes. any of that. That's no. And you send it to my friend who's a criminal youth yeah. lawyer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. 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 Il a beaucoup, il y a beaucoup de travail à faire. Il y a beaucoup de, 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 de ouais, mais de, de rapports qui, qui, qui in, investiguent les, les, les um, systemic uh, discrimination contre certes, des, des personnes de certaines couleurs ou de, de certaines. Um, Race, color, gender. Yeah, toutes ces choses là, ouais. Il y en a beaucoup de rapports, il y a beaucoup de travail à faire, clairement, parce que vous avez tellement une opinion à propos de certaines choses. Alors, on peut voir qu'il y a beaucoup de travail à faire. Puis, il y a aussi un gros manque au niveau de l'accès à la justice. C'est pas ouais. tout le monde qui a, comme on a parlé, accès à un avocat de ouais. manière équitable. Oui. C'est bien dit ça. C'est un... bien dit. Puis, pas juste de l'avocat, mais aussi de l'information, je veux dire. Oui. C'est un système qui est tellement complexe que pour une personne qui ne connaît pas ça, c'est vraiment difficile de s'y reconnaître si tu n'as pas accès à quelqu'un qui connaît ça ou si tu n'as pas d'argent pour payer un avocat. Ils vont dire quelque chose sur le droit légal. Oui, donc j'ai rencontré. Quite a few legal aid lawyers, and the ones that I have met, like I don't know if you have met, um, so I won't be able to speak to your experiences. But in my experiences, they really cared. They took, oh, they yeah. actually dedicated the time. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 It depends. It depends. It depends. The legal they they do. Do. Almost, almost selling into the police. The the legal. There's some that like they just dedicate their lives to doing legal aid. But it's better to have a lawyer you pay. We must agree. People look at you and lie all the time. I got stopped, right? Okay, and my lawyer, my first lawyer was a legal. Aid, oui. right? And Yves uh, Menard, that's his name, right? And um, he, he found legal aid. And um, in my case, whatever, when I came, uh, he was, he, he, he prenait vraiment à cœur avant que je le donne l'argent. Il était vraiment tout ça. Puis après, il m'a jamais demandé l'argent. And when I came to give him money, he's like, nah, I don't want your money. Just, wow. I was, you know, I swear, because I was about to have my kid. You know, those days, they keep it me like I'm gonna work on your case, and he didn't even make me pay for nothing. And till this day, yeah. like. When I call him, he's happy to see me, and his daughter is happy to see me. So, so they put on a case, you know. And they, and they, they, I won my case, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Would you defend a murderer if the money was right? <laughs> No, well, okay, so I just want to mention, so, the, so the, the, no, I just want to mention my, my that, the, that, yeah, but there's also the principle that everyone is entitled to a, a defense. Everyone's entitled to be presumed innocent until proven guilty, right? So I might not want to do that, and someone else might do that, but there's also these two legal presumptions that are there. Because mm -hmm. imagine if, if it was, you're guilty right away and you have to hire a lawyer to prove your innocence. That's a it's little... It's kind of like that though. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Like, unwritten, unwritten, unwritten rule. Unwritten rule is kind of like that. Mm. But like, we like, learned in one of our classes mm -hmm. that you're, like lawyers aren't supposed to, like the, they could get in trouble, like it's illegal for them to, if they know that their client is guilty, they That's can't the use the defense right. like you're innocent. They can say like, yeah, they're guilty, but like they deserve a lesser sentence, or they're guilty of like a different crime, but like, oh, yeah. you can't just say they're innocent. Oh, they're oh yeah? Mm. Lawyers, are lawyers are not supposed to lie, you mean? <laughs> there's actually a, there's an ethical code. Yes, yes, we, we have a crime. But there's proof that they yeah. committed a crime. There are defenses in certain yeah. situations, such as even in, um, in, in homicide. To lower the sentence or, or to... Exactly. One of my former bosses is a criminal defense attorney, okay? He specializes defending Mafia and Hell's Angels. That is what he does. Yeah. He knows these people are guilty. He knows it. Yeah. He actually had in a, a guest speaker who was a convicted hitman. Right, mm -hmm. But he, so he, he has clients all the time who say, I did it. I totally did it. But, but he never, he himself, because he is a criminal defense attorney. Yeah. So you can't ask somebody who does family law defend me. Okay? But if normally, if you ask a criminal defense attorney, defend me, I did it, they will do it. And he loves doing it. And he will try to, every single thing to try. He can't say that you didn't do it, but he'll say, oh, but that proof doesn't work. You know, that proof could, that proof, that bloody knife, well, that somebody else could have had that. Contaminated. Contaminated, he'll try everything else. Get it thrown out, reasonable doubt, other suspect, and then if at the very end the person is convicted, then he'll say, oh, but there were other reasons. There was this reason and that reason and that reason and that reason. So there's a whole, like, you don't do all of the defenses at once. You have to be strategic. 
But most defense attorneys, even if they say, you know, even if they hear, yes, I did it, they'll be like, sure, great, bring it on, tell me all about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guys, it's been a real pleasure, and I hope you'd have a great career. And I hope we won't need you, but uh, someone will. And thanks to you guys for asking all these questions, for participating, yes. Thank you so much. for sharing your like inner personalities at midnight and 5K and all of that. Thanks, you, you, you guys are you're awesome. Pretty cool too. Yeah, but you know now.